Hey guys, welcome to this new video. Today we're going to talk about moving to Cambodia. So I invited an expat living in Cambodia for more than five years and he's going to share with us his perspective, the pros and cons, as well as his uh, anticipation for the next years. So if right now you are considering moving to Cambodia and relocate there, I invite you to check this interview until the end to get all the insights from Julien. Let's get started. Uh, thank you, Julien, for accepting uh, this interview to share uh, from your experience of being an expatriate in Cambodia. I knew you live in different countries, uh, in Europe, in uh, South America, and you finally ended up being living in Cambodia for more than five years. So it's really something that kind of uh, made me curious and I wanted uh, to invite you to share about your whole journey of moving abroad and living in Cambodia. So uh, thank you for accepting uh, this interview. Uh, can you start maybe by sharing uh, us uh, who you are and what have you been working on and finally again ended up living in Cambodia for five years? Yeah, for sure. So as you previously mentioned, um, Cambodia is not my first experience. I used to live in a different place before. So I live in uh, South Korea. It was my first experience abroad. I live uh, six months in South Korea. I was in uh, Seoul. In fact, I was not exactly in Seoul. I was in a small city close to Seoul called Gumpo. And I was working, uh, at this time I was working in orphanage. Uh, so I spent six months, I think, in, uh, in South Korea. And the year after that, I was uh, Erasmus in uh, Poland. So I spent five or six months there. And um, after that, I had the opportunity to study in Poland, uh, to study in Cambodia for my master too. And I accepted it and I moved to Cambodia. So it was in uh, September, 2015. And initially my plan was to say only one year, but I'm still here. So you, you're going to share with us again a little bit later why after a few years, uh, five years, you are still there. Uh, but maybe now can you start uh, by telling us from your perspective, what would be the pros and cons uh, from a foreigner uh, living and working in Cambodia? Um, I mean, one of the reasons why I'm living here, it's uh, I think it's not just about Cambodia, but it's more about myself. I like the idea to live an adventure to do something different. Uh, as I said previously, I mean, in my case, I, I really love my country. I have no issue with friends. You you know, you have some guys that want to leave friends because I don't know, they, they are not very happy there. In my case, I really love my country. I have no issue with this. I just wanted to have uh, a different life. I wanted to have, uh, I always have admiration, admiration for people who have kind of, uh, I would say, very interesting life. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I love history and I love this kind of people. So in my case, I, of course, like uh, in my own way, I wanted to have some kind of adventure and doing some things that uh, uh, to go to the unknown, if I could say. So that was one of the reasons why I decided to, to move to Cambodia. And here it's so different from France. Because if you go to Europe, of course, it could be different. I live in, a, I live in Poland and I used to go to Spain or Italy. And, and it's different from France, but Cambodia is very, very different from France. People, the culture, the religion, everything is different. So I like this experience in my case, personally. It's what I like. Um, people are very, very kind. Uh, it's kind of stereotype in, in, in some case, but it's true. Like People are very kind. It's very safe. Um, the weather is, is great. Um, yeah, after, I would say maybe the the um, what is difficult, I mean, as an expat, it, it, is to be far from your family and far from, from your friends. But yeah, if you live in Canada or Australia, you will have the same issue. Uh, it's something that you have to deal with it. It's like when you go to a new country, you have this uh, amazing uh, experience that you are very open, so you are going to meet new people. But at the same time, you are far from your family and far from your friends. So yeah, it's not just about Cambodia. It's, uh, I mean, it's like it's a life when you are an expat. Okay. And, uh, you know, so we, we, we met in Cambodia maybe five years ago when I was living there. And actually, I left also Cambodia because from my perspective, the country was a little bit too small and I wanted to find a, a bigger place, you know, to also during the weekend travel and to have also more opportunities. That's why I, I moved to, to Vietnam. But you actually, after after uh, five years, you are still there. So I want to know the reason why you are still there. Um, can you share with us? Exactly why? Uh, as you mentioned in your case, 
you, you wanted to travel and all this kind of stuff. I think uh, one of the big difference between you and I is we have a kind of different career in some way. I'm uh, an employee, I mean, I work for a company. Uh, in your case, you work in the freelance, you are an entrepreneur. So we have a different lifestyle. So as you say, in Cambodia, maybe it's small, and but it's also just the beginning. So people need you, they need your skill. And most of the companies are growing now because it's the beginning. So that means if you start to work there now, that means in the future you can have other opportunity. If you go to Bangkok, they probably don't need you. Uh, that, is, that is a fact because now it's, uh, I mean, Thailand is a well-developed city and they maybe don't need your profile. When in Cambodia, you just said it's, it's a beginning in some way. Um, as you know, like five or six years ago, Phnom Penh was very different from now. So that means like this, this uh, city is growing, it's moving forward. And that's why I decided to stay here because I have an impression like here, I can have better opportunity because the economy is growing. So I can grow with the economy in some way. Mm. And uh, I don't think I will have the same uh, opportunity in Bangkok or, or in Vietnam. That is one of the reasons. And also, uh, personally, I got uh, several promotion when I was uh, working for my previous company. So most of the time I was thinking, of, okay, I'm going to stay one more year here, and one more year, and you got a promotion, and after you have some stuff happen in your personal life and all this kind of stuff, and then one more year and one more year and one more year, and then here we are. And so, Okay, and so now can you share a little bit more about exactly what you are, were doing in terms of the, the, the work side? Uh, you, you've, you've been working for a media company, I know, for more than three years. You were involved in different businesses. Uh, is it really easy to find a job in Cambodia? Can you share uh, with us also how, from a, a foreigner perspective, he could maybe maximize his chance of finding a job in Cambodia? I don't know if it's easy or not. It depends on your profile, okay? Um, of course, you have to, to speak English. Uh, I mean, English is my second language. English is your second language. And, and for most of the people who live here, English is our second language. So you don't need to be, you don't need to be a bilingual in some way, but you need to be able to walk. Uh, so that is the first thing. I, I have to mention it because, of course, it's very, it's basic, uh, basic stuff. But many people in France, they don't know how to speak in, uh, English, for example. So that is the first point. Uh, second point, of course, if you have some specific skill, it's going to be easy for you to find a job in logistic, in finance. Um, yeah, everything about banking system now is growing in Cambodia. We have a new bank, like ABA Bank is growing very fast and all this kind of stuff. So yeah, I would say it's not too hard to find a job. Of course, it would be easy for you if you have been in, in this country for a couple of years. That means you know the culture, you know how to work with people, you know the market and all this kind of stuff. In my case, it, ha it has been easy because I start my career here. So basically, my first job was in Cambodia. I've been student for a year. So for people who wanted to, from, from how to say this, from my previous company, from, from their point of view, when they decide to hire me, I've been in Cambodia for over a year. So they know uh, that I know how to work uh, with Cambodian and with Chinese, and they know that I can live here and I can handle different situations that we have to face in Cambodia. So if you just arrive here, uh, it can, maybe you will need like a couple of weeks before finding a job. And I think that is okay. So it's better to have some saving if you want to move to Cambodia. And as we previously uh, mentioned, um, it's probably the best thing to do probably is to come here holiday spend a week two weeks three weeks and if you enjoy it yeah then you can think about living in cambodia that could be yeah mm. okay so number one coming there as a tourist exploring the market seeing if you really like to be uh, living in cambodia as well is very important right because there is a high gap between uh, western countries and, and emerging countries such as cambodia you would say number two is to gather with the, the community, maybe the expatriate and, and the, the, the local entrepreneur, maybe. And you say number three, having a diploma, right? It's like now it's a little bit a, a fake dream to think that you could go to Cambodia, open a hotel and uh, having a very chill life. Um, yeah, forget about it. But um, as we discussed before, in the interview, I think it also depends on your situation. Uh, if you are a single man, a single woman and you are 25, I mean, you, you, you can try. I mean, you have nothing to lose. You're, you're, you, I don't know, maybe you are 
you have a couple of thousand dollars on your bank account. So you have nothing to lose. You can come here, you can uh, try to live here, you can try to find a job. And if it doesn't work, you go back to your country or you can go to another country, you can go to Thailand, you can go to Vietnam. So yeah, in that, in that case, it's not a big deal. If you have a family, um, if you have two kids, a wife, a business or a job, you need to think twice. You cannot take a stupid risk. So you need to think about it. So then in that case, yes, you have to visit the country first. You need to talk with expats. You need to talk with local. You need to check the market. You need to see where are the opportunity. In the best case scenario, you need to find a job before coming here. That is the thing that you have to do. So you're, if you travel here for two or three weeks, you need to, to meet a different agency. You need to go to different network, networking events like that. Maybe you can have a job before coming here. I have one of my, one of my friends, when he arrived in Cambodia, he had a job already. So he was working for SFR in France. So it's a telecom company. And then he found another job for Cambodian telecom company. So he applies there and then he got the job. And when he got the job, he, he decided to move to Cambodia. So there is, a, I mean, it's depend on your personality and it's depend on your situation, but uh, you have different way if you want to start your life in a different country. Okay, uh, thank you, Julien, for, for this sharing. Uh, can we come back maybe to what happened during the, the last year? I know in 2019, there were more and more regulation uh, for the visa, uh, especially before I remember in, in 2016, we could get one year visa very easily. Uh, no one asked anything. Uh, now I, I know it's getting more and more uh, tough, I would say. So it's better to have a war permit or it's better to have a, they would ask you, why do you want to stay here? Uh, can you share with us a little bit about these legal aspects and the trends that are kind of implementing by Cambodian uh, government to kind of regulate uh, the foreigner living in the country? Yeah. So as you just mentioned, we have some regulation now. For example, you need a work permit. You need a business visa, of course. But um, it's not like in Thailand, because I know like most of the people like you work in a freelance, they used to live also in Thailand. And in there, in this country, you have like uh, a lot of regulation. You have many regulation. And in, here in Cambodia, and at least as an employee, it's easy. I mean, you work for a company, they are going to pay for your work permit. They are going to pay for your business uh, visa. That's it. You give your visa, you give your passport. Three days later, they give you passport back and you have your work permit. Cause I think it costs, I, I don't know. I think it's $300, 150 I don't remember. I don't pay it, so I don't know the price. And then uh, you also need your business visa and that's it. So if you work in freelance, I don't exactly know, I'm not going to lie, but if you work as an employee, you just give your passport to your employer. Most of the time you negotiate this point when you sign a contract. Okay, I work for you, but you pay for my work permit and you pay for my visa. Most of the time there is no problem for this. You start to work in a company when you have to renew your work permit and when you have to renew your visa, you give your passport and that's it. Okay. Yeah, at least as an employee, it's easy. And it's the only thing that I can say. Okay, and can we sh can you share maybe now more about uh, how was 2020 in, in Cambodia? I know in Vietnam, for instance, in the very early stage, um, the authorities took very, very strict action. Uh, so um, hopefully we could have, you know, everything very well uh, maintained and not a lot of flick uh, of COVID people in, in, the, in Vietnam. How was your perspective and um, your understanding about the, the way Cambodian uh, reacted and finally the, the end result we know now? Yeah, so the, the government in Cambodia handles the situation very well, like in, uh, like in Vietnam. They have been very serious with this. Uh, it's impressive if you compare with France, for example. Uh, yeah, the government has been very professional. That means like when we start to have a few COVID cases, they start to implement like very strict regulation. And that explains why now we don't have COVID in Cambodia. So it was like very, very serious. Like for example, we had in November, we, uh, we caught someone who had COVID and this uh, person was, uh, she was in a supermarket. And after, uh, I think after seven or 10 days, we were able to find uh, all the people who have interaction with her. So it was like, people would think, oh, it's, uh, uh, because it's not a rich country, you know? So people think, oh, they don't know how to handle the situation, but they know how to handle the situation because we, it's not the first time this kind of thing happened in Asia. So they know how to handle it 
perfectly. So we don't have any issue. And one of the things, for example, here in, in, in Cambodia, when you go to a supermarket, you wear a mask, someone is going to clean your hand, you check your temperature. So we have all this kind of traceability in some way, and we are able to know like who is sick and who is not. And that's why we have no problem with COVID. The only problem that now we have in Cambodia, it's, um, it's uh, economic impact that we have because of COVID. Uh, we, I think now in I think in Cambodia, like you have one third of the GDP from tourism industry, and now the tourism industry is over. So we do not we don't have we do not have problem with COVID. And as an expat, for example, you are free. You can go to the club, you can go to have a drink, you can go to a restaurant, you can go to your pool, and all this kind of stuff. The only problem that we have as an expat now, but not just expat people, I mean, expat and local, is the major problem is like now the economy is not so good. That is the thing in terms of job opportunity and all this kind of stuff. Uh, it's the only thing that I can say because we have been impacted by COVID. Uh, all the world, or the world have been impacted by COVID. I mean, also in France, I think if now you want to find a job, you're not going to find maybe your dream job now because it's a COVID situation. So it's more about, uh, it's more about this. It was a bit stressful as an expat. Oh, maybe I'm going to lose my job. Oh, I have to cut my salary or all this kind of stuff. But I've never been worried about the COVID itself. It was more about the consequence of, the, of this uh, virus in our economy. It was more about this. Yeah, it's the, it's the same in Vietnam. I know Vietnam has been like, I think had a 3% GDP growth this year. So people say, oh, it's very good. Yeah, but still we know from an expat perspective that it could have been better. And I guess in the in Cambodia is the same. It's like, of course, it's, it's very dynamic countries and very emerging countries. So you will still see a lot of construction, a lot of new buildings, a lot of new opportunities. But for sure, the economy suffer and the, the poorest people are the, the most impacted by that. Um, now maybe to, to turn the, the, the end of this discussion to a more, I would say, a better angle. Uh, can you share maybe some, some advice, uh, some, some tips uh, for foreigners who would still uh, be willing to uh, look for moving to Cambodia to find a job? Well, if you want to, to, to go to Cambodia, as I mentioned before, uh, you, should, you should come here first as a tourist. Come for one week, two weeks, talk with an uh, expat like a uh, person like me, discuss with us, uh, go to different meetings, take your time, uh, check, try to find uh, some information online. And as I say, it's like, it's depend on your situation. If you are single, you are uh, like, I don't know, you are in your 20 or in your 30. I mean, you can take some risk, guy. It's, it's all right. If you have a family, think twice about it, but just take your time. Uh, it's, it's a big move in some way. It's nothing crazy because you and I, we are used to this thing. So we know it's not a big deal to go to another country and start a new life. But I can understand for someone who have never done this kind of stuff, it's kind of a big deal. So collect some information, meet some people who live in this country, discuss with them, and that's it. And after, just, just go ahead and I'm sure it's going to be okay. Okay. Thank you, Julien, a lot for your, for your sharing and your perspective from someone being an expat and really still want to settle down and live in Cambodia for a couple of years. Uh, thank you again. Uh, and then uh, I see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.